Hello. Charlie. We Charlie. Charlie. We hear Sato say, check out. When I was playing Matthew's Cup, Charlie was the water boy, and we used to bring some energy to training. I was introduced to him when I was pretty young. He used to come and give us some of the best pre-game speeches that you'd ever hear. Do you want to win or not? Yes. That's not good enough. Yes. Do you want to win? Yes. Wait, so grab this one. Do you want to win? The players love him. The coaches love him. The fans love him. I love him. Who's taller? <laughs> Who's taller? <laughs> the kids love him, and he's always got so much time for them. And. He loves helping young kids that, you know, are sick. Come in, <laughs> He'd be by far the, the oldest mascot we have in the NRL, ever. He's South Sydney, he bleeds, even though he doesn't play. Time, every time. Oh. I had them for a while, and I'll feed them morning and afternoon. Well, my dad came out in 1950, and uh, a year later, Mum and I and my brother come out here. We ended up in La Perouse. Well, when you come to a strange country and uh, you don't know anyone, younger kids my age were picking on me, but no one has ever put it over me. All them kids are having, having a go at me. And uh, Dad decided to sell the, the little garage he bought and we moved to 23 Jennings Street, Nashville. At 16, I started my apprenticeship as a panel beater. At 25, I opened up a shop and then I got really involved in the football scene because my panel beater was a coach and he asked me could I help him out one weekend and I did. In 1980, I had um, a lot of people will know him now today, Sean Garlic. I've been involved with the Rabbitohs since the, the junior days, uh, starting with the Larpurus Football Club. And moved through the ranks in the junior reps and got to first grade in 1990 and finished my last year in 1999. Went to La Perouse Public School and so the obvious thing to do was to play for the local team at Yarra Oval and he was the trainer. He did all the stuff that needed to be done in a dressing room, ran the water onto the field. At 10 years old, the team won a grand final in 1980 and then I got really, really involved in football. The thing that we liked about Charlie, like we were nine years old, he was the same height as us, you know, and so we related to him. He was always going to be a rabbit, you know, when you, you saw the size of him, but he was, he had that much energy and passion in him. It really rubbed off on the players, you know, so he was great to be around. You know, he was always one to give you his opinion. He was never wrong, of course. I broke my ankle playing in a game at Mascot Oval and Charlie was our trainer at the time and I couldn't walk on it, I couldn't do anything, I couldn't walk off and um, I got up and I'm standing on one foot and I had to come off the field and the only person there to help me was Charlie and I'm, he's down here and I'm up there. We come across Charlie early days. Whatever was going at La Perouse, Charlie would be there. That's when we first knew about the emergence of Charlie Calico. Have a drink, you know? You've got to come this way and hit him hard and run. You still see it to this day that he's still down at the juniors uh, running water whenever he can and just offering his time and, and effort into the club. He was a great volunteer for South Juniors, especially the junior reps. So that was his natural progression after several years in the junior league. A great friend of his and one of my colleagues at the time, Chucky Jones, took him under his wing and said, Charlie, You've got the ability, we're going to get you accredited to be a trainer for our junior representative sides. 
First time I met Charlie, um, we've been a nervous 13 year old, probably going on my first trip with the Junior Bunnies, sitting on a bus with a bunch of other boys, yeah, but everyone was pretty nervous and I remember this little fella standing up in front of the bus, Charlie being Charlie, needed to cut the tension in the air and what better way to do it than his famous old song that he loves to sing, either that or getting up and dancing. And from the first moment I obviously knew that he was a, a pretty likeable character and yeah, it was obviously great to obviously get to know him along the way through that camp and then, um, you know, later on in life. You don't give him any mercy, right? And the other thing I like to say, when you're in the dressing room or in the gym or whatever, don't wear hats. I've made it pretty clear to the boys, you know, what he means to the club and, and you'll see throughout our footage and everything, he's always around our boys on the sideline in the shed. So I just want to let the boys know, you know how important he is to the club and the community and trying to get that to rub off through some of our guys if they keep progressing through our pathway. So yeah, absolutely very important to us. Let's go lads. Right. Come on boys, here we go. Let's 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 go.
won the sudden death semi. Souths have won. Have a look at these seams of happiness. Reggie Rabbit. Yeah, you better believe it. Raise your eyes, Reggie. So back in the day, underneath the grandstand, we had Reggie, who uh, was our groundskeeper. But on game days, he would dress up in a suit, hence the name Reggie the Rabbit. Reggie was at the club in the 80s when I debuted and played through the, the seasons there with the club. Players loved him, players used to G him up a, a bit. I went away on a trip away with Reggie Fred when the Rabbitohs used to have their trip to America at the end of season. He was literally this big and he sat down in the middle seat in economy and he put his legs straight out and they didn't touch the seat in front, you know, and he had luxury all the way over to LA. Sometime we used to argue, me and him, because he always said, I'm taller than you, and I said, no, you're not, you're shorter than me. And we have arguments over that. It was a sad day when we lost him. He passed away in the 90s, and um, it was probably fitting that the Rabbitohs weren't around for a couple of years whilst we marshaled to get ourselves another rabbit. And we couldn't have been luckier, we couldn't have been more fortunate than to get uh, than Charlie Gallico. He set up the whole thing for the rabbit mascot, and Charlie's doing a great job doing what he does, and an extension of Reggie, and may he rest in peace. Reggie the rabbit loves it, and so too do the South Sydney players. Mate, just amazing support, what a great night. A man who's been through some big games, probably none bigger than this one, even though it's a trial. John, how do you feel? The Rabbitohs just got back into the comp. We had to put a playing roster together. We had to assemble trainers, coaches, you know, support staff, strength and conditioning, all of that thing. And the last cherry on top was something that no one really considered was the mascot. And because Reggie the Rabbit had been such an iconic attachment to the Rabbitohs brand for so many years. At the time, Sean Garlic was a football manager. It was a charity shield. I asked him, could I run the boys on? And Sean said, I have to ask the board. I said, oh, well, do what you have to do, but I want to run them on. A couple of days later, he, he rang me and he told me I can run them on. To run out there and see all the little girls, mums and dads, and a, a real big occasion for me. And uh, I done my 80 minutes as usual. Then I went back on Monday to Sean Garlic and I asked him, can you put to the board that I would like to be Reggie Rabin? If there was an apprenticeship to be done, he'd done it with the juniors and with the junior league clubs, you know, so he was a footy fanatic. He knew his way around a dressing room. A week later, I got the RK and I've been doing it ever since. Charlie's a little bit taller than Reggie, so we had to get a new suit made, and he took to it like a, a duck to water. You know, he was a great addition to a team that we we're putting together from scratch. You know, we we're bringing players from all over Sydney, from all over Australia that really weren't Rabbitohs at heart. We only had a couple of juniors, John Sutton, one of them. We had to put this team together, and Charlie was a big part of of bringing that culture and restarting the, you know, the famous Rabbitohs again. When you're out in the field, you know, Charlie will be walking next to the people like Latrell, Cody, Cookie, and you can hear the kids on the sideline going, look, there's Charlie, Reggie the Rabbit. I love the kids. I love running on the field, and all the other mascots only last 10, 15 minutes and they walk off. But the South Sydney fans we have are the best because they're waiting aisles just for me to sign and the parents are getting into it too. My kids were both those tiny little ones that came running up so excited and their eyes sparkling because they got to have a photo with him. Kind of it all started from us going to so many games and him away seeing us around in the crowd. And eventually I started going to other clinics and stuff that he was there. Now he's like a granddad to me. They get really excited coming to the games. They're more excited to see Reggie Rabbit than they are to see me, I think. Who's your favourite player? Reggie. He's a broader representation of 
the people who make this club what it is. You know, he's for the working class and uh, he's got so much, you know, passion for this club. He's the, the life and soul of this club. He's always there game day. He's always leading us out and, and making sure that we're, we're on our toes. The club wouldn't be the same without him leading us out every week. It's a pretty special part of what we do. It's a credit to him. He's always at our games and we're lucky to have a guy like Charlie at our club. The people you meet, the players you meet, the, all the workers, all the volunteers, you know, it's a great honour to be there, and especially being a South Sydney man. I love wearing the colours. I wear them anyway. And people even today say, oh, in the shopping centre, oh, there's little Reggie, little Reggie. You know, it's an honour to do your part in the community. Tucking him in. No, see, mate. Hey, he does a good job, Terry, mate. He's too busy looking you at you. You've got to come in and. and oh, no, you've got to see the officer tucked in. What are you doing? <laughs> he wants it tucked in. I think what stuck out for me was that Charlie, as the Reggie Rabbit, was not like every other mascot. You know, some of those other mascots for other clubs are different every week, different every year. Charlie had been doing it for a lot of years and never misses a game and goes to all the extra things that a lot of people don't see, it's not in the media. And what really inspired me about him was how he spends so much of his time dedicated to fans outside of the game day as well. Like he goes to hospitals, if somebody calls him up and they want him at a birthday party or a fundraiser, he goes there, he supports anywhere he can be to put a smile on children's face is where he wants to be. Over the many years he's got to, you know, the Prince of Wales Hospital and, and community events all down the east coast of Australia. I know when we play games in Queensland, he'd often stay behind up there and help out, you know, charitable organisations and just, just a really caring guy. Pretty much every time he comes up to the Gold Coast, he's always offering his time somewhere or somewhere. He'll bring the suit and he'll go to the surf club charity event. He's gone to other rugby league sessions with kids just for a fan day. He's taken signed items or particular Rabbitohs merchandise and gone and delivered it to people. He's connected with so many people across our whole nation that he's always doing something somewhere for somebody. Whenever you're down, out in the cold, faithless and dark, your story's untold. Come take my hand and walk there with me. I know a place where we can be free. There is a light. Would have been 2016. Uh, I was at a sportsman's lunch um, on the Gold Coast and I had the privilege to be actually sitting right next to him for the whole day. Spoke about three of his main passions, was his family, the Mighty Rabbitohs, and his love for sharing and getting out in the community and his hospital work. Early 2017, I rang Charlie and I said to Charlie, as a young family needs help on the Gold Coast, they need to raise some money to get their young sick son to America. And I said, what can we do? We came up with a superhero night at one of the local venues on the Gold Coast. Within a week, Charlie was on a plane with Reggie suit and up at the venue. We had the family there on the night and I think little Charlie's second favourite superhero now is Reggie the Rabbit. He just spent a good two hours with Charlie. It was amazing. That night we raised 25,000. Um, the target for the family was 250,000. So once we Got the ball rolling on that, the media jumped on board and there was 40 other events within a week on the Gold Coast that jumped on board and helped that family get Charlie to the States. And that young Charlie's still with us today. That was the first charity event that I did with Charlie. Ever since then, he's been helping out more. We speak about your charity work, you do a lot, not only directly through the club, but outside the club. 
and there's some significant stories that were very long in time. One particularly about a motocross accident. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, that started about a, a year later when I was Reggie Rabbit. The club got a phone call that their son fell off a little bike. He was 15 at the time, but and the bike hit the gravel and he fell over. When he went down, he hit a rock on his head. For six months, the doctors told him that I can't do any more of what they done. So mum and dad rang the club and asked for Reggie Rabbit because he was a mad, mad Reggie Rabbit fan. So I went there to the hospital Westmead and uh, when I got there, the father and mother met me outside and I asked them the question, what's wrong with him, blah, blah, blah. And um, I said, look, the doctors have done everything in this hospital, but looks like he's going to be in a wheelchair. Because he loved you, he loved Reggie Rabbit, maybe it can spark something off in his, in his head. So we went in the room, this massive room, and there was doctors, his doctors, nurses, other kids around. And I, I went right in front of him where he was, and I started doing movement, laying on the floor, doing movement and all that. And for about 20 minutes, there was no response at all, nothing. So I tapped the father on the shoulder. He knew we had to go out. So when we went out, the father said to me, Reggie, can you please go back again? We go back again and do it again. I said, okay. And then I don't know what made me do it. I said to him, you say something to your son, but something loud, really loud, that you think I might click something. So we go back in the room and here I am doing all the actions and all everything. And the father said, what colours are South Sydney? What colours are South Sydney? That moment, that second, he moved his lips. And the doctors and everybody in the room clapped. Because they, then when he moved his lips, he heard something in the brain and everything else. That gave everybody a lift in their heart, a lift that he could move his lips. Then I left him and I was happy as anything. And um, when um, five years later, he turned 20, he married a girl that was by his side at 15. And I got an invite to that. And I went. I went all dressed up, not in Reggie Rabbit, but all dressed up. And that's something nobody can forget. You know, you can never forget things like that. Unreal, just unreal. Yeah, nice morning tonight. Sunny. No rain. And it's nice to be happy. When the moon is your eyes Like a big piece of pie that's the moon. It's nice to be happy on a sunny day. That's the oldest one, she's 22. Yeah. That's her sister there. And this is my grandson. I've got a wonderful family. I've got two girls, one boy. And um, the oldest girl is 52. The younger one, 48. My boy's 41, and I've got four grandkids. That's my young daughter, with her, her family. They all love me, they all respect me, they ring me up every day, phone calls. It means a lot to me. When you go through stages of your life, you're going to sometimes put things together and make them work. 
നഷ്ടവനേ Mom said, she's a good girl, she's a good woman, and she'll marry her. And after six months, I got married. Right? And uh, her personality was un- unbelievable. You know, we get along fine. No, I never argue, and she never argued with me. And uh, work was uh, the provider. I used to work seven days a week and get home sometime nine o'clock from from six in the morning to nine in the night, just to make things what how I wanted it to have money. She looked at the children, looked after my son Anthony. She had a wonderful character, wonderful. Everybody, when she went shopping and all that, everybody knew her. She she talked to anybody. in a gentle She was very happy for me to become Reggie Rabbit. She never missed a game until when we played Cronulla. I asked her, "Will you like? We're going tonight. Come on, get ready." She said, "I don't feel like going." Isn't good when gets us underway here. Yeah, the game had finished. I think we might have lost the game as well. But I noticed after the game, normally Charlie would be around the dressing rooms and that, and I noticed he wasn't there. I got a phone call from my daughters saying, "Dad, you got to come home. Mum not well. They never told me on the phone." And uh, I got in the car and started driving back. And when I got driving back, I said, "Don't go home. Go straight to the hospital." And that's when she had the massive heart attack. I put on life support, so to make the family happy and everything. But um, four in the morning, I took the life support off, and she died. The most important thing to me is that Isaac Luke and uh, Adam Reynolds, the week after we played uh, Newcastle. Yeah, I remember that like yesterday. Really, I remember getting the news from Madge, um, and we weren't too sure whether he was he was going to be at the game or not. There'll be a poignant difference to the entry of the Rabbitohs this evening. Of course, normally it is Reggie Rabbit leading them out, but today the players will lead Reggie out. We're told they'll form a guard of honour for Reggie, who is driven by Charlie Gallagher, and sadly. Charlie suddenly lost his wife Sophia on Monday night. I decided we needed to do something special for him. You know, not only to help the healing process, but just to show him what he meant to us as as a person. You know, we gave him a guard of honour to run on the field. And he he ran the players on, and Reno and Isaac were around then. And and we didn't know how Charlie was going to be because you know, he's uh, quite an emotional man. And everything he'd done here was you know, from his heart. So I said to Reno, like, if we win, bro, we'll just walk him over. Obviously, we're all thinking of him, and you know, I sent him some wishes and whatnot. And you know, Charlie being Charlie, had to beat the game and had to get his job done. And an emotional night for South Sydney. Yeah, 
time a mascot after such a heavy event like that just shows the character and the strength he has and, and the passion he has for this club. That game was obviously dedicated towards him from all the team. Luke out of acting hard and finding some room. Again for one point, it's Reynolds from 45 out. It's high enough. It's long and lucky. And it is good enough for South Sydney to win. There's a special part at the end of the game there where Charlie was walking over towards the borough and obviously the news had gotten out about his wife and he got a standing ovation. Um, and I could tell he was pretty emotional in the suit. And me and Isaac sort of walked over looking at each other and me and Renee, you know, we're not the biggest <laughs> players in the in a club, but they like them. We we wear our hearts on our season. When uh, Charlie mourned, we mourned so. So let's throw him up on the shoulders and, and got him up there and marched him over towards the borough. It was a pretty cool moment. Fittingly, Reggie put on the shoulders of the Rabbitohs. For me, it's an iconic picture of Reggie. Even though Renault and I play in different colours, we will always be red and green. You know? This is our home. See the Isaac Luke there with his old mate Reggie the Rabbit. Reggie's coming after him. You know, it's not hard for me and Isaac to go over and do that. Charlie's a, a part of the, the Rabbitoh family and we had to try and uplift him and make him feel like he had support around him, which he did. And it's pretty hard to give anyone words who's just lost someone. And uh, the only way I saw him how to do that was to give him a cuddle and give him a bit of comfort. And we still hold a great relationship now, obviously, that I've moved on, but those moments, you know, memories will live on forever. It was a very big surprise for me. Then they came behind me, lifted me up and walked me around the stadium. To me, that's a great honour, a great honour. And when they lifted me up, I had a bit of a tear in my eye. I never expected that, no. Action. Right? Yeah, just go hang it up. I've got to bring it down with me again. Because the, the string broke it. But I'll pretend I'm putting it up. Okay, cool. Oh, let's go from the start. Let's go from the start then. Just so you're not looking at the camera. Alright. Three, two, one. Action. the Titans, that would be the, good, the two best mascots I think. But you've got other one, you know, you've got Manly, you've got Roosters, you've got, you can't single one out. But to me, I single out the Titans. Back in my youth, I played Al Matthews Cup for uh, Newtown Jets and was walking off the field after the game. We crossed paths in the tunnel at Redfern Oval back in 1984. And then as soon as I saw him uh, in 2012, I said, that's the guy from 1984 but in the tunnel at Redfern. 2013 and I got asked by NRL to go down and do some shots for the NRL ad. And I was sitting in the dressing room and there was a couple of other mascots and Charlie walked in and I introduced himself. And then when we were shooting for the ad, he was just mucking around the whole time and he kept getting in trouble because he wasn't being serious. Then afterwards, I sat around for probably about half an hour having a chat and he invited me to mascot on the field with him. So the next year I flew down and I did uh, sideline with him. I was kind of in awe because, you know, this is, this is Rabideau's mascot, this is Charlie. You don't get to meet legends very often. But here I am, you know, working the sidelines and hanging out suddenly with what I class as a, an NRL icon. See you after the game. See you later. Taff here from the sideline. Better strike this time. When we play them, in front of the crowd, they lift me up and their, their members and our members 
gone crazy. I love it. I love every moment of it. I saw Bully and Renault carry him off the field after that game. The 2014 came along and the night before the game, I said, let's pick Charlie up and put him on our shoulders just to show him that we're behind him. He said to us after the game last year, no one else does this for me. I, you know, I really appreciate it. None of the other mascots, you know, interact with me like you guys do, so. Even though we're wearing different colours, we can still champion our opposition when they need a lift. It's a great moment. You remember Cooper, my son? Come on, yeah, there you yeah. go. We've watched you some photos for you to stick in your bar, mate. Mm -hmm. That's cool with the crowd up there. You got that one on your wall, haven't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, we'll go, I'll get you to sign that one for Cooper. Sometimes you see him behind the scenes getting out of the suit, he's dripping in sweat. You know, he's been in uh, 30, 40 degree temperatures and he still comes back and still turns up. We had a temperature gauge out the back and I think I hit about 48 degrees inside the suit. You've got to really know what you're doing. You've got to keep hydrated. My heart rate was sitting around about 148 beats. It is uh, an endurance um, event, basically. Charlie, mm -hmm. good work. Thanks. Um, so he was driving taxi. Driving taxi. Yeah. Pull the shark's tail. I'm feeling the name of mine. Did you pull the shark's tail? Yeah. Any, any yeah, fingers? Any blood for pressure? I don't know. Take chicken your suit. Chicken. I can't. You got your suit on. <laughs> you did it on purpose, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm surprised you're helping me, mate. Yeah, my name's Andrew McDonald. Um, I'm the Chief Medical Officer and I started here in 1996. I've got the swear jar. You never came out. I've got the swear jar this week. I brought it with me. Okay, what are you got? Well, Charlie's just turned 79 and, uh, you know, he really acts as though he's nine. So he's always been young at heart, always been young in stature. He's always very happy to be around the place. Everyone's always happy to see Charlie. He's good for a joke, good for a yarn. Everyone loves pulling Charlie's leg. But, you know, he really loves what he does, uh, loves being at the game, loves being around the boys. He's a wonderful guy. He'll help you out. He helped me out a few times, of course. But I respect him highly. A real, real, real gentleman. I was talking with Shane Richardson and he said, listen, we have to have a talk about Charlie. And I said, what's wrong with Charlie? And he said, oh, you know, he's in his 70s and, you know, it would be terrible if he, if he you know, had a cardiac arrest, he was on the field and he's in the rabbit suit. I missed one game when I had a massive heart attack. I was out for half an hour. And they took me to the hospital and I had three main arteries blocked. So they operated on me, brought me back to life. I missed one game because the doctor told me you've got to have a few weeks off. So I had that week off and then the week after we played in Cairns. And in Cairns it's 40 degrees, 45 degrees. And I wanted to test myself out whether I could last the heat and my heart would last the and I've done the whole 80 minutes of it. He goes in the hospital, has stents put in, comes back bright as a button and says he feels better than ever. Lucky that that happened uh, off the field and not on the field. Charlie, you looking good, mate? What are you up to? Put your phone down. Who's texting you? 
Who's texting you? Everybody wishing me happy birthday. Hello? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Charlie. Happy birthday to you. Hip hooray! Hip hooray! Hip hooray! Thank you, every one of you, for doing this for me. I really appreciate it because you're all number one in my book in this office and uh, you all work together and uh, you know you, you do your job well and um, I wasn't expecting this anyway thank you very much Make a name for yourself tonight. Put the effort in and come out winners. It's amazing just how fast time goes. You know, he's been there for 20 years now. There's no one still more committed, more passionate than uh, Charlie Gallagher, you know, and he's going to leave a legacy long beyond his time in that rabbit suit. I often still wonder, is he going to do it again this year and again, you know? He'd be by far the, the oldest mascot we have in the NRL, ever. You know, I say, let's enjoy it while it lasts. You know, he's still there. He doesn't seem to be showing any sign of slowing down or heading into retirement. So we need to make the most of it while we can. I see him as a modern day superhero. Everyone knows Superman, Spider-Man, Batman, but everyone knows Reggie the Rabbit. Every football club has got their mascot. Who does everyone talk about? Reggie! And every time he comes up, I say, can I just put that head on Charlie? And he won't let you. That's his pride and passion. All right. Listen, boys, men. Today we're playing again here, Redford Island. In my time, being in the Mafia Shield, I saw at least 40 players make the NRL at 15. I'll tell them. I'm a life member of three clubs. The NRL club, our club I'm talking about, uh, South Sydney Juniors. Yeah, he made a life member in about 1990, I believe, or a little bit thereafter. There's not many life members in the football club, but it's probably one of the greatest things to have uh, happen. I don't think you need to put on a, a jersey and play out on the field to be regarded as the legend of the NRL. Charlie is a legend of the NRL. I think he should be immortalised in red and green. He's certainly played a lot of roles in people's lives and even though I've moved on now, I still have a great relationship and still love him. I joked about getting him up on the horse. Don't know how he'd go with that, but no, he's certainly a big part of the, the Rabbitohs family and, um, you know, will live on forever. I had a lot of hair then. <laughs> Not much hair now, but... And this is when I got married here. He loves his rabbitos, he loves his family. Everyone here at the club realises what big part that he plays in us. For such a little bloke, but a little bloke with a big heart. Can't sort of thank him enough really for what he's done for the club and without Charlie it wouldn't be his happy place, that's for sure. What we do without him, he's the best mascot going around in the league. Speaker. I'm only a little. Happy birthday. I'm only a little. I am part of South Sydney. I am, I've been there nearly 52 years of my life. To go in there and see the players and see the staff and other people, 
it, it gives me that great joy. I think that's what keeps me going. And when you've got people that respect you, it's a big thing in life. I have something to go to. If I feel like a little bit sad or I'll go, I'll go to the club and talk to the staff and everybody else and I've got that respect and the players. The players give me the, the most highly respect, you, you know, you can't talk about. But that's, the, that's life. You've got to make life sometime yourself, you know, and do it. Because if you stand back, you're not going to get anywhere. You've got to be open, laugh, and when you're down, you're down. But I'll wake up. I've always liked to be among the people. We all get to a stage where you think this is it. And I hope that that doesn't happen to me. Because when I do decide, it'll be very, not sudden, but I will let, I'll let all the fans know that I'm retiring, not quitting, retiring. Special friends on here tonight, turned 79 on Monday, Charlie the Rabbit. Yeah. It gives me the, the greatest feeling at 79 to be able to run on the field with the boys. Anyway, I appreciate you boys, every one of you, the staff and everybody. And uh, I'm turning 79 and no, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, right? But if I turn 79 Monday, I'll be a happy man. And I love you all. Yeah. To all you fans who will see this, I hope I'll be doing it for a long, long time yet. I'm not retiring, and I hope I will see a lot of you on the field. few times he got in a little bit of strife along the way and uh, Richo would bring him into the office and ask him a few questions and back in the day he used to give all the answers and put himself deeper into trouble and at one stage he says oh I can't keep getting into strife what do I do I said well every time you get asked a question about what you've done you say I can't recall and every time he gets in any trouble these days he says I can't recall and that's about all I get out of him these days. Galeana is his favourite drink Drink Scalana like it's nothing. Too many damn fucking <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
was my first year at the club and it was after the Charity Shield coming back from Mudgee and I was getting a bit chirpy with Charlie, as you do, and having a few jokes here and there, so he, he was giggling and walked up to me and decided to uh, pour a, a, a full young Henry's beer on me, so um, that's a, a fond memory that I always carry with myself and thanks again, Charlie, I appreciate it, champion. When the moon is your eye, like a bed is a bite, that's the moon. And when you have too much money, it's the moon. That's it. I'll pick it up, right? But I can't push. Yeah, I can't push a button. Hey, like that, hey? <laughs> Our own private market. Head looking at the camera. Ready? Ready? Go. Right, go. Keep going, keep going, keep yeah, going. Straight up. Alright, now turn the hose off. Stop the hose. 